Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for um, a very generous embrace of the concept of cultural intelligence and IQ. Um, as you mentioned, my background is I was at NPR News. I'll go through that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to speak for about 10 minutes, and then Anna and I are going to um, facilitate a workshop. So sorry if somebody already showed this today, but this is why we need testers, especially in the day <laughs> of automation, okay? So this literally was a PR stunt last night on the stage where Elon Musk brought out his new pickup truck, and he had someone one of his team members throw something to prove how like bulletproof or whatever his windows were. And then both times they smashed. <laughs> okay. And it was live on stage and it was like such a huge to do dude. Okay. The whole concept of automation, not needing testing and you know, is just absurd. Um, <laughs> So Boyang Albert Lee is um, an amazing artificial intelligence uh, researcher. He was Disney's first AI researcher, actually. And he says, to function properly in a society, humans heavily rely on cultural awareness. So if AI is going to become part of our daily life, it must be aware of human culture and have deep understanding of the humanities. When I look out in this room, and I'm not exaggerating because believe me, I was in public broadcasting for 22 years. This group is one of the most diverse groups I've ever seen in engineering. You know why? Because this testing community embraces people from all different backgrounds. Do you know what? The future of AI and personalization needs you, needs people from different backgrounds who are gonna inform this future. So I spent uh, 22 years at NPR where I was senior producer, uh, you know, did a lot of different productions around the world. And my last job was I was head of the identity and culture unit. And as I looked at the future of automation, I saw that some of the same things that are missing in mainstream media in terms of all of our collective voices are going to be actually worse. I was also managing editor for uh, Sophia the Robot, and I helped um, pick her team, her global team of writers, I helped uh, build some of her AI. And um, one of the things that was very important was Sophia has been to 30 countries around the world. Every time she goes to a new country, she has uh, different cameras in her eyes and everywhere. And so people would come up to her and she needs to like understand what people are telling her and she needs to be able to talk to them. Machines in the future are going to be engaging with us in completely new ways. So we have to be prepared for this future. Uh, I led a delegation of 20 uh, storytellers and AI experts to Geneva at the AI for Good Summit this year. And um, our premise was to really give visibility to many of the AI researchers who are doing remarkable work in this field. So Rafael Perez y Perez sitting right in the middle, he's created a machine that generates uh, stories from Aztec folklore. And he printed a book that his machine wrote. The machine wrote stories from Aztec cultures. So who's testing all of this, okay? We have to be prepared for this because again, you are the front lines of this. Um, Aprajita Mathur is an amazing uh, senior software engineer manager at Garden Health who I met here in June uh, through Anna. And Aprajita, uh, really what I said to her touched her because she's a tester and she comes from the medical sciences field. And she understands that precision medicine is very much lacking data sets from diverse people and backgrounds. And she says the same thing that is happening in precision medicine needs to happen around personalization so that one day her great great granddaughter can go to Google and say, why is it that Indians have a red dot on their forehead? And Aprajita said, I want Google or Siri or whoever's there 200 years from now to say something from the heart, like to say something about my culture that is actually going to allow my great great grandchildren to understand who I was. I'm not an object, I'm not a machine, I'm a human. And another remarkable researcher who's one of my advisors is Wolfgang Victor Yarlett. He's an AI researcher at Florida International University getting his PhD for his master's thesis he proved that the Genesis story system at MIT could understand a story and a culture other than 
Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> so he fed 100 pieces of data from his Crow culture to this machine. And we're going to hear just a minute of what he has to say. The point is that he was incredibly um, pioneering in his work, right? Because he did what Angie said. He had a crazy idea, but you know what? He went to his professor and he said, let me try this with the Genesis story system. And it worked. That was his master's thesis. So my, this is what I believe. And again, I've been embraced by the testing community. Um, I have spoken at probably seven events from Star West to Quest for Quality in Dublin, Ireland, where I met Anna a year ago. So we have to, you as the testing community, can rise and be a catalyst. You can be at the forefront of what is about to come around personalization because you are the last front lines before the user is gonna experience something. When I produced a story at NPR, I closed my eyes and I would write it imagining one person. But I had to reach 30 million people. Same thing with AI. You have to touch one person with your product it has to relate to them, but it has to be scalable. So we need to work together and help journalists, storytellers, as well as testers to understand what does it mean to test an algorithm, right? We can learn this together. And cultural relevancy in the future is going to be a two-way street. So let's prepare for it from right now. Let's be ahead of it. I'm really, really incredibly honored that Anna is one of our global partners along with AI Commons, other organizations around the world. And Test Master Academy is going to be leading together with myself and other organizations, five webinars beginning December 18th, where we are going to look and work with the testing community on how do we test for an algorithm? What are the components that need to be considered? So as part of this workshop that we're gonna do right now very briefly, which we're obviously sprinting on, we would like your ideas. What do you wanna hear in these webinars? When we bring experts from around the world uh, on a webinar, what are some of the elements that you want to hear about around uh, personalization and cultural intelligence? So clearly you know that algorithms and data sets are having a difficult time understanding and being relevant to different communities, right? This is very clear around some of the stories that you've read on machines being biased, et cetera. So how do you bring businesses closer to the audiences they're targeting? To me, cultural intelligence is what's missing. So that's why you have to have AI algorithms that are training to learn patterns that really express global cultures and traditions. And so the opportunity is to search, identify, classify, and promote all possible cultures from the past, present, and future, okay? It doesn't just have to be Elon Musk going and creating a pickup truck that, you know, is like 2050, and all of us just get wowed constantly only by Elon Musk or by Mark Zuckerberg or by something that one of the Silicon Valley companies do. Each one of you is a Mark Zuckerberg. Each one of you can be at the forefront of this. We don't need heroes. Okay, this world of artificial intelligence is new. Be a pioneer. Raise your hand. Say that you want to own a piece of this. And people will listen to you. You have commanding knowledge on the front lines of the customer. So let's make cultural intelligence easier and um, something so that both humans and machine audiences can benefit from. So cultural intelligence can enable marketers to sell a product better, it can enable more authentic business development strategies, and even in the context of diplomats, allow them to be more effective because they know the references and the background of the people who are talking to them. So we just launched um, a crowdfunding campaign for an algorithm for stories on women. This is the first data set challenge that we're doing. We're gonna be doing 10, this is the first one. So the idea is there's no comprehensive algorithm currently that exists around AI-ready data on narratives of women who have inspired humanity across the <coughs> centuries. This came about when we were in Geneva, sitting with the woman who wrote for Siri, 
She was Apple's creative director. She was the chief writer for Siri. And she's like, Devar, we need to create new data sets. I, she comes from an Asian background. There are women in our mythologies who inspire us. They don't exist anywhere, right? Why is it so much concentration on developers in Silicon Valley who have created AI and AI solutions and products that really just speak to their own background? So we're excited to really have you spend, I guess, 10, 15 minutes brainstorming. Number one, what do you want to see in a webinar that would actually be helpful? And I know, again, Angie said one thing that she's disappointed about is that there's so many opportunities, so many people that are writing, so many people that are creating these um, opportunity, learning opportunities and not enough people are taking advantage of them. Here's your opportunity to number one, say, guess what? I wanna be a speaker because I have an expertise in this area and I would like to share that. So this isn't a one-way street. We just wanna hear from you, your ideas. What should be in these five webinars? How could you contribute would you like to know more about these data set challenges? And I'm going to hand it over to Anna. Thank you very much, Tamar. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, the reason we created, started thinking about webinars because my goal is to bring artificial intelligence testing awareness to the community. So we started thinking about webinars, but that's not all, right? Uh, there will be something else, but, and I want, uh, for, for the next 15 minutes, I would like at each table to brainstorm what do we as testers need to be on the forefront of this new technology? Because you hear throughout the day about the new challenges. The challenges are new. AI, uh, artificial intelligence is non-deterministic, which means there is no expected result. Do you understand what it means to the whole testing uh, methodologies whatsoever, right? There is none. It's like crumbling down. That's, this is it. So uh, that means that we as the community has to come up with something new, with new methodologies and maybe new training centers or maybe something else, I don't know, uh, that allow us to kind of pick up quick and be where we need to be because we're going to be testing this new world which is completely different from what is that we are at today. So um, at your table discuss what are the ways that we QA testers need to um, be involved, learn from, experience these new technologies that we can test. Do I, do I kind of explain myself? Because I always have idea, I'm a visionary. Sometimes I cannot put it in words. But like, what tools do you need today that can prepare you for tomorrow? Let's invent those tools today, okay? And then we can implement them tomorrow. <laughs>